leaders in Canada are struggling to come to grips with the legacy of their predecessors. Across the country, activists are calling for the removal of statues dedicated to men considered forefathers, whose names are increasingly synonymous with a legacy of discrimination and violence against Indigenous communities. Oh, this is a town in horrible grief. Uh, this is a community broken. This is a community stunned and shattered um, and grasping for ways to deal with it. And um, it's hard for a lot of people to comprehend this. A week ago, the remains of 215 children were found in an unmarked grave at an old boarding school designed to culturally isolate Indigenous children from their families. Since then, Canada has been going through a public reckoning. 215 Indigenous kids were found in an unmarked mass grave. Anytime we think about unmarked mass graves, we think about a distant country where a genocide has happened. This is not a distant country. This is here in Canada. From the 1880s to 1996, an estimated 150,000 children were taken from their homes, many of them by force, as part of an assimilation program run by the government and the Catholic Church. They were forbidden from speaking their native languages and subjected to physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. In 2015, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada called the practice a cultural genocide. The recent discovery of bodies has prompted calls to search all such schools for more unmarked graves, where thousands more children are thought to be buried. Certainly no surprise at all. Um, everybody in the First Nations community knew that there are mass graves. Um, we've been calling it for years. We've been telling the government for years that there are mass graves in every single residential school, um, but they didn't listen to us. Flags are at half-mast until further notice, and Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau spent the week recommitting to reconciliation. Saying sorry for the tragedies of the past is not enough. It is not enough for the children who died, for the families or for the survivors and communities. Only with our actions can we choose a better path, and that is what our government will always try to do. On Tuesday, he kicked off National Indigenous History Month by announcing an investment of $18 billion over five years to address socioeconomic disparity in Indigenous communities. But critics say successive Canadian governments have been slow to address ongoing issues of discrimination, even blocking efforts to uncover and report past atrocities. Cases of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls remain disproportionately high and largely unsolved and violence against Indigenous people also continues. Critics say that is all evidence that Indigenous people are among the most marginalized in Canada. Zain Basravi, Al Jazeera. Very pleased to welcome Chief Norman Yakalea to Al Jazeera. He's the regional head of the Northwest Territories for the Assembly of First Nations. He is also the chief of the Dene Nation. Joining us from Yellowknife, Canada. Chief, thank you for your time today, it, it strikes me, and we heard it in that report, and I heard it from a guest earlier, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now, a wider conversation about Canada and its past if this discovery hadn't been made. And yet people like yourself have been saying this for years now. In my language, I said thank you my people, it's beautiful outside. And certainly you are correct to the world that we would not have this discussion if it wasn't for, with a heavy heart, I say, for our children to expose this reality that's been happening with all Indigenous people around the world, and especially in Canada and the Northwest Territories, mm. that our elders our old ones have been telling us for a long time what happened to the students in the residential schools in Canada and the Northwest Territories of their children and their family and their loved ones who have not come home once they were forcibly removed to attend 
a residential school that was to civilize the indigenous people, the Dene mm. people. And we want to ask for prayers for people to pray for us and for people who suffered this type of policies all around the world, especially for us in Canada. It is the children who are setting us free. The schools themselves are a thing of the past. The last ones closed in the mid-1990s, I believe. But can you tell our international audience the ways in which Indigenous people in Canada are still marginalised today in, in 2021? Thank you. The last residential school was closed in a new bit called the Groyer Hall Residential School, which was notorious for over 20 years of sexual physical abuse on the young boys by the residential school and our girls there. And we want to show that the residential schools in Canada that have been exposed over 130 of them that certainly it started with the doctrine of discovery mm. and came to Canada, that the doctrine of discovery said that the indigenous people were not people and that when they came over, it gave the right to the Europeans, people in England, Spain, the right to come on our land without recognizing and respecting that for thousands and thousands of years, there were indigenous people living here with our own societies, mm. our laws, our language. But that doctrine is a dangerous doctrine and that the crown, the king of England and the churches use that to put their way of thoughts, life upon us and to make us something we are not. And then we've been fighting for that for 153 years mm. with Canada. Chief, Chief Norman, Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister, he has apologised, which I'm sure is welcomed, and then he says, only with our actions can we choose a better path. What should those actions from the Canadian government be? First of all, let's get to the bottom of this. Tell the truth. Look, we need to sit and work with indigenous led to work on all these residential schools to see if there are any other unremained sites to be discovered. Let's check all our residential school sites in Canada. And it needs to be led by the indigenous leaders and the people. Governor Canada, we have tired of your words of saying you want to do it for us. You did that in the residential schools. You wanted us to learn to speak English, write English, learn your ways, at the same time forgetting about who we are as a Denny culture and our values. So we say to Canada, first of all, support us and we will do our own investigation. We mm -hmm. have doctors, lawyers, and we have well-educated chiefs and we have our elders to guide us. And then to ask the Pope, to come to meet with us, indigenous people, face to face, and talk with us. Mm. You have a role in this, and all the other churches, the Anglican Church. We asked the Pope since 2015 to come and to talk with us and to apologize. Enough is enough. We are people, and we asked the Pope to give us that opportunity to sit and talk with us the Pope of, of Rome. And so Ch we have not heard from him yet. Chief, so we're tired of waiting. Chief Norman Yakalea, we really appreciate your time uh, to talk about this very important issue. Thank you. Thank you. We ask the world to pray with the Dene and all the indigenous people in Canada. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you.